Mariachi music will fill the air tonight during a celebration in honor of Mexico's Independence Day. Lots of people are going to be taking part. How some local high schoolers are contributing to the festivities. Veterans who fought in World War II and the Korean and Vietnam War spending the weekend in Washington, D.C., why they say the trip is both an exciting and somber occasion. An east side home, now a crime scene after a man and woman died in what police are describing as a murder-suicide. Coming up, we have new details. We're learning about the couple this noon. Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. New details this noon on a man's arrest following a standoff that lasted several days. San Antonio police say after they cleared the scene, they arrested Baltimore Martinez during a traffic stop. San Antonio police called to that home on Diamondback Trail near Crossroads Ranch on Tuesday. It was for a mental health call. Police say the suspect, though, was armed and dangerous. It took four days of calling him out. A SWAT team finally clearing the scene and left, telling neighbors it was a tactical retreat. Well, that left neighbors frustrated. However, officers kept an eye on the house. Eventually, Martinez left the home, got picked up by someone driving an SUV, and that is when police say officers arrested Martinez during a felony traffic stop. He was booked on three felony warrants, including probation violation, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, and deadly conduct. The battle over immigration. It continues. President Biden now slamming the Republican governors of Florida and Texas, as well as Arizona, accusing them of, quote, playing politics with human beings, end quote. This comes after they sent buses and planes full of asylum seekers to New York City, Massachusetts, and even the vice president's residence in Washington, D.C. As ABC's Rena Roy tells us, the Democrat-led areas say the influx is overwhelming local resources. President Biden going head to head with some Republican governors, accusing them of using desperate migrants as political pawns. Republicans are playing politics with human beings, using them as props. What they're doing is simply wrong. Conservative governors sending more migrants from border communities to Democratic-led cities just two months before the midterm elections. In Washington, D.C. Thursday, a busload of migrants dropped off outside the vice president's house. They were sent there by Texas Governor Greg Abbott, and some saying they were given false promises of what they'd receive. They said that they were taking us somewhere where there is refuge, a lot of help. They were extremely confused. This is a very residential area. On the wealthy island of Martha's Vineyard, two private chartered jets from San Antonio making a surprise landing. Sent by Florida's Republican governor and potential 2024 contender Ron DeSantis. The minute even a small fraction of what those border towns deal with every day is brought to their front door, they all of a sudden go berserk. The immigrants that arrived here were not met with chaos. They're, they've been met with compassion. Since May, New York City receiving nearly 12,000 migrants. We need help. We have not been ashamed to say that. We need help. The Republican state leaders say their intent is to send a harsh message to the Biden administration about what they call a broken immigration system. President Biden challenging Republicans to instead help draft a bipartisan solution. It's long overdue for Senate Republicans to come to the table and provide a pathway for citizens, for dreamers, those in temporary status, farm workers and essential workers. There has been a surge in border crossings, a record 1.8 million apprehensions since October, with about half of those migrants being immediately expelled, the other half undergoing normal immigration processing. The White House acknowledging the system is flawed, but saying it will take time to fix it. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Getting a quick check of your early weekend. We're going to call it the early weekend. Let's say the weekend's already started. Okay. You good with that? I, yes, yeah. absolutely. I'm on board. Yeah, it's going to be a little warm out there as we gear up for the upcoming weekend. We already have seen more peaks of sunshine break out of some of that scattered cloud cover. It was a warmer start earlier this morning than what we saw yesterday. More humidity is on the rise. We'll get you a look at all of that here, starting off with temperatures. Take a look at this just here in San Antonio, 84 over at SA International. It's 87 at Stinson this hour, 81 at Kelly, and then 82 out at 
Randolph on the east side of town. Now we are seeing that moisture pump back into south central Texas. This is a look at the change in dew points, which is how we measure that moisture in the low levels of the atmosphere from right now compared to where we were this time yesterday. You can see that that humidity is definitely pumping back in thanks to a southeast wind at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. So this afternoon we are expecting those temperatures to climb into the low 90s for most of the San Antonio metro. But with that humidity, of course, it likely will feel more like the mids, maybe even a few upper 90s at times. So that will be the story as we head into the weekend. More muggy mornings as well as some toasty afternoons still. Spoiler alert that is in the works for next week as well. We'll have all those details coming up in a bit. Thank you, Mia. The medical examiner has released the names of a man and woman who died in what San Antonio police describe as a murder suicide. They are identified as Yolanda Lopez and Carlos Batista, both 43 years old. Officers found the couple dead from gunshot wounds inside their home. Katrina Weber tells us why police say they had no way to prevent this violence. A phone call for help in the 700 block of Burleson Street came too late for the couple who lived in this home. San Antonio police say Yolanda Gisela Lopez and Carlos Bautista, both 43 years old, already were dead when they arrived around 8.30 last night. While the case is under investigation, officers at the scene said it appeared Bautista shot Lopez several times, killing her. Then they say he shot himself once, also dying from his wound. Police told us the two were married and lived here with their two teenage sons but they believe lately there has been trouble at home. One neighbor who says she knew the couple told me she was too distraught to talk about what happened here on camera. Also devastated are the couple's children who she says actually witnessed the shootings. Family members arrived last night to comfort the teens and are taking care of them now, according to police. Investigators believe the shootings happened during what may have been an ongoing argument, but police say they had not been called to the home before never asked to intervene before the couple's troubles took this deadly turn. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And this noon, police are still trying to track down the person who they say stabbed a man in the neck on the city's west side. It happened just after one this morning in the 1400 block of West Woodlawn Avenue, just west of I-10. Police say the man was visiting the suspect at a woman's apartment when an argument turned into a fight. Police say that man was then stabbed in the neck and taken to the hospital. At last check, he was in critical condition. Retired veterans who served in wars across generations now heading to Washington, D.C. These guys are going to get a chance to see the memorials and the monuments dedicated to their service in person. Camelio Juarez was there before the honor flight took off on a trip of a lifetime. I was really flabbergasted. I never expected anything like this. Ramon Castile is one of 20 veterans who will visit the monuments in D.C. dedicated to the sacrifices they made defending our country. I think we're going to see more this time because we're guided. The group will tour the Arlington National Cemetery military museums to name a few. Despite the excitement, Vietnam veteran Mario Ramirez says the trip will also be somber. Six of his friends died in that war. He plans to look for their names on the Vietnam War Memorial Wall. Well, it's sad because uh, we, we, we went together through a lot in Vietnam and we did the firefights and all that. And uh, my sergeant had only 30 days left and uh, he, he got killed. Uh, and the other ones also got killed as we were in the firefights. A World War II veteran says the last time he visited the National Mall was when he came back to the States after fighting overseas in 1946. My shipmate and I ran up and down the mall in our bare feet in the grass. And I'm just looking forward to seeing that grass and running through it again. I don't know if I'll do it bare feet. <laughs> Organizers say these veterans are living history who deserve to see how they are honored at the Capitol. Veterans will return this Sunday with a big warm welcome, something that many Vietnam veterans say they didn't receive when they came home back in the 60s. For more information about the honor flight, you can check that out on our website at ksat.com. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. Here's something to mark on your calendar for tomorrow. Registration open for the ninth annual Head for the Cure, the 5K run and walk, raising awareness and funds to fight brain cancer. KSAT 12's former news director, Jim Boyle, was diagnosed with glioblastoma. He passed away, but that legacy lives on. 
His daughter helped to kick off this event outside of KSAT Studios all the way back in 2014. Since then, it's grown with more families running for the survivors and in remembrance of their loved ones. This year, it all kicks off on the 24th. You can register right now on KSAT.com. Use the promo code KSAT and get $5 off the registration fee. Still coming up this half hour, UTSA creating a little stir with a video they shot promoting the big game tomorrow night against Texas in Austin. Horn fans not happy. Larry Ramirez with why coming up in sports. Look. Local high school students have been perfecting their craft, playing mariachi music. Now they're hoping to show off those skills and share their culture through song. How you can enjoy the fruits of their labor tonight. Get ready. The sounds of guitarons, violins, and other instruments. They're going to be filling up the air at the Pearl tonight in celebration of Mexican Independence Day. The Viva Diecise at Pearl event features different mariachi groups, including Burbank High School's mariachi band. David Huertas explains what this means for the students who get to perform. I'm happy to be able to have this experience um, and to be able to express my culture and... Uh, my soul that is in mariachi music. In Mariachi Estrellas de Oro will perform tonight at the Pearl. Burbank High School sophomore Juan Sandoval is excited to share the traditional Mexican music. This is my first time performing at the Pearl and it's a great honor to be able to do this. Students part of the mariachi program learn to play instruments, sing and perform. Mariachi music is about um, expressing your feelings through a voice and an instrument or just body language in general. It's like a connection between like the music and yourself. You get to relate to it. The mariachi program at Burbank High School has been here for more than 10 years. More than 100 students are part of the program and they learn different skills that will help them even after they graduate. They're, they're usually very good at doing presentations and, and uh, job interviews. So after learning how to really express themselves and how to be comfortable with their own voices. Students look forward to sharing their love for mariachi with their family, friends, and community. And I hope that uh, the people who are there watching the performance uh, for all the mariachis there will be able to understand uh, our culture and how we play. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. And to celebrate Mexican Independence Day, the Pearl will host a free event featuring a variety of mariachi groups this afternoon. The performances will be throughout the property until 7 this evening. Performers include the trio Cantares Dimitera, Las Caroneras, and Mariachi Azteca with a guest appearance from Mateo Lopez, the world's youngest mariachi. That event is going to kick off at 5 at the Shade Structure. There will also be Loteria games, guitar painting, and a whole lot more. What an exciting evening and afternoon. Yeah, and I guess you need to dress for the warmth. Yes. yes. And That's, the humidity. Yes, that is the two big things that will be with us this afternoon. We've also got a small chance for a couple of showers, especially the farther south as well as east that you go. We'll get you details on that, but first, a look at the aquifer. No change compared to yesterday, 635.1. In terms of our pollen count, we do have four out there today, but the good news is they are all low. So we will talk about those muggy conditions as well as the warmth that will be in place into the upcoming weekend. I'll come up in a bit. So yesterday, Mother Nature teasing us a little bit in the morning. Nice cool temperatures. It was dry. This morning, it was like, ah, too bad. That Forget was about that. Tease. That is exactly what happened. It was a nice little tease to some of that crisp fall air. But yeah, it was a much different story stepping outside earlier this morning, thanks to some of the added humidity that we have seen filter back into the region. In fact, take a look at temperatures this morning. Here in San Antonio, we were 8 degrees warmer compared to yesterday morning, waking up at 75 degrees to kickstart this Friday. 73 was the morning low out in Hondo. Still wasn't too bad across portions of the hill country, just shy 
high of 70 degrees waking up this morning in Kerrville 66 out in Rock Springs, but we are quickly warming things back up as we wrap up this work week. A live look outside shows that we do still have plenty of clouds on hand, but some peaks of sunshine. We'll call it partly cloudy to partly sunny temperatures this hour. 84 is where we sit over at the airport. A dew point just shy of 70 means that it feels just a little bit warmer out there. Feels like temperature currently at about 88 degrees. The south wind on hand at 7 miles per hour. 85 up in Bull Verde, 82 out in Converse. It's 87 out at Stenson, 86 up in Bandera. Still holding on to the upper 70s out in Lost Maples. And again, we will try and put this heat as well as a little bit of the moisture to work this afternoon in the form of a very isolated rain chance, especially near the San Antonio Metro pointing out west. You can see that cloud cover that we still have filtering in from the south, pushing farther up to the north. We have already managed to find a few isolated spots of rain closer to the coast near Victoria. I think that will be the region that will have the best chance of finding a few additional showers to maybe a stray storm before the day is done for San Antonio. We'll call it about a 10% potential. Notice here on your future cast throughout the remainder of the day today and even into the early evening. It's possible that we do find a couple of splashes, but again, more of us than not do look to sit quiet before the sun goes down. So here's your case at 12 hour forecast throughout the remainder of the day. More peaks of sunshine temperatures climbing into the low 90s here over the next couple of hours. 93 degrees is that forecast high here in San Antonio stepping out for any of those evening plans or any area football games. Those temperatures will fall into the 80s shortly after dinner time and they will continue to fall into the low 80s and eventually upper 70s later tonight. Now as we take a look farther up to our north as well as our east, there's an area of high pressure and because we sit on the southwest side of this high pressure system, that's why we have those southerly winds in place pumping in just a little bit more of that Gulf moisture. So that means that the mugginess and the humidity is unfortunately going to stick with us as we head into the upcoming weekend and at least into the first half of next week as well. If you stepped outside earlier this morning, especially along and east of I-35, we did have some areas of patchy fog development. It's not completely out of the question that we find that again first thing tomorrow. If we do, that likely scatters out and lifts by the mid morning hours. Temperatures climbing into the low to mid 90s each weekend afternoon, and we will keep that very isolated chance for a stray shower in the forecast before the day is done. High pressure is going to move in as we head into next week, which means that pretty much squashes the rain chance. And unfortunately, those temperatures will still sit plenty warm, starting off in the 70s, transitioning to the 90s, guys. All right. Thank you so much, Mia. If a UTSA, nobody in the country is picking you to even have a chance against <laughs> Texas tomorrow. Might as well have some fun with this deal, right? And you know what the thing is, a UTSA does this often. Yeah. They release a video that shows their uniform combo. So it just so happens to be they went to Austin to shoot it, and that has a lot of Texas fans pumped up for sure. Coming up, we have part of that video for you if you haven't seen it yet. And Brennan played Taft last night to help us kick off the new week of BGC. Coming up. For a big game coverage kicked off with number four Taft taking on number two Brennan at Ferris Stadium last night. Late first quarter, Bears ball on Taft's six yard line. Running back Avron Carter takes the handoff, runs up the middle, shedding tacklers, bouncing off defenders, and spinning his way in for the first score of the game. 7 0 Bears in the final from Ferris. Brennan wins 54 13. At Alamo Stadium last night, Lanier and Edison squared off in a District 14 5A Division II showdown. Edison's Roger Lopez pushing ahead on the QB keeper to give the Golden Bears a 14-10 lead. But on the ensuing kickoff, Marquise Dixon fields the ball, finds the lane, and he's taking it all the way back. 96-yard kickoff return to put the Vokes on top, 16-14. But Edison gets the win, 20 to 16. It's time to do some curls and bench pressing along with the Marion Bulldogs football team. The guys are lifting weights Wednesday when we stop by to preview their game with the Carn City Badgers. The Bulldogs are 2 and 1 entering their final non-district matchup. In week 1, they edged out Hondo 21-20. In week 2, they beat Natalia 35-17, and last week they lost at Gonzalez 27-13. Feel confident about it. 
You know, we have some people out, but we're hoping district, they're back and healthy, come back strong. Uh, as a team, we're doing good. We need to work on some stuff, tackling, but during practice, we've been working hard and we're going to get it done. Pretty confident. We're, we got a great bunch of guys. The team chemistry is amazing with us group. We've been playing with each other all the way through middle school. It's just it's great. Uh, I feel great. You know, we've had a couple injuries uh, in the past few practices and past few games, but, you know, we got to do got to do what we do what we got you know but I feel great you know coming on to the you know come off a loss against Gonzalez you know but I feel good about this game. Marion will host Carn City tonight at 7 to kick off the BGC road trip followed by stops in Lavernia and Stockdale. So if you're looking for the BGC streaming schedule for tonight and tomorrow please scan the QR code on your screen it will show you all the games and how to stream them. UTSA and number 21 Texas will play some football tomorrow night in Austin. The Roadrunners are getting ready to face a top 25 team for the third time in their last four games, dating back to the 2021 Frisco Bowl. Fresh off a 41-38 overtime win at Army West Point, the Roadrunners will now try to beat a Texas squad that barely lost to number one Alabama 20-19. Yeah, I mean, you come off what they, what they did last week, you know, a team playing Alabama that close, the number one team in the country, it, it'll be a good challenge, uh, it'll be a good atmosphere, you know, our fans will be able to go and, you know, they're going to pack that stadium, so it'll be a great atmosphere and we're just excited to play that team. UTSA football tweeted video of their uniform combo for Saturday that was shot in Austin, including at UT, and Texas fans are fired up about this one. In all fairness now, UTSA does this for most of their road games, and not much is typically made of it. But this one seems to have really struck a nerve. UTSA, by the way, is going with the blue helmet, white jersey, and blue pants. Kind of trespassing, right? Florida? Yeah, I'm sure they had to get permission to go there and do that. Oh. I would think. Fans are a little sensitive. I, you know, I don't blame week. them. Hey, it's a great way to hype it up, though. Come on. Hey, I'm, Let's just have I'm a good football you. game. Yeah. You know, I, it's, it's, it's going to be a classic game. So much fun. <laughs> awesome tomorrow. Yep. <laughs> Coming up, a watchdog taking his career to new heights, but her ambition is causing some concern from the neighbors and police. Why her owners say there's nothing to worry about. Coming up later on today's News at 5, new recall alert issues for several products you might have purchased for your child. We're going to tell you which ones you should be on the lookout for. That's today at 5 after Entertainment Tonight. We'll be Law enforcement officials now warning that muggings are on the rise, specifically cases where the crook follows the victim from the bank or an ATM and then robs them. In Austin, police say that they are seeing a surge with 84 reported cases just since January and more than half a million dollars in stolen property so far. In one case, Austin PD says a woman was attacked outside of her house last week by a thief. Officers say she was thrown to the ground and dragged across the pavement while she was trying to maintain her possessions. And just last month, Jim Ostrander says he was followed after making a large cash withdrawal from a bank. He says while he was paying for gas, a suspect smashed his car window and stole the cash from inside the vehicle. My entire month's salary gone in a split second. I, I'm, right now I'm speechless. I still don't even know what to say or think or do about it. These guys are dangerous. And it's not just happening in Texas. In Alabama in July, authorities say two men followed a pickup truck after the driver cashed his check at the bank and then went to a nearby convenience store. Surveillance video appears to show a person breaking into the window of a truck and taking the cash. Two men were arrested. Uber now investigating a cybersecurity incident. It's coming after a hacker shared evidence of breaching the company's computer systems with journalists and security researchers. This is not the first time that Uber has dealt with a security breach. Hackers stole data on 57 million driver and rider accounts in 2016. Uber reportedly paid to cover up that breach. When it comes to your infant, researchers are recommending breastfeeding remain the standard way to feed them. ABC's Justin Finch looks at new guidance and what parents can do to help their children. The American Academy of Pediatrics has updated its breastfeeding recommendations. Experts say breast milk should be given to infants exclusively during a child's first six months, and then some foods can be introduced. Parents can also breastfeed children for two years or longer if they wish, but that poses several challenges, including social ridicule. 
Many pediatric disorders, including sudden infant death syndrome, acute diarrheal disease, and asthma, happen less among breastfed infants. The Academy of Pediatrics says parents should not consume more than two alcoholic beverages a day or use nicotine or marijuana while breastfeeding. Those with HIV, T-cell, lymphotropic virus, untreated brucellosis, or Ebola should not breastfeed. Be sure to talk to your child's pediatrician for more information and additional resources. With this Medical Minute, I'm Justin Finch, ABC News. Taking a look outside with live cam. Lots of pretty clouds out there, but we're just going to call them pretty because they don't mean anything but maybe a little shade here and there. Exactly. For most of us, that's going to be exactly what they mean into this afternoon. For a select few of us, maybe some of those cloud tops can grow just a little bit taller and put down a quick shower or two. Pretty brief out there. Better chances farther south as well as east. The big thing that's going to affect everybody today is going to be more of that mugginess. You definitely felt it outside earlier this morning, especially compared to that wonderful start out there yesterday morning. Those dew points on the rise currently in the upper 60s and low 70s and because we did have that moisture move in overnight it was a cloudy start to the day and of course we did have some patchy fog development especially off to our south as well as our east that has broken up just a little bit more leading to those pretty clouds with more peaks of sunshine helping those temperatures warm right now we are in the 80s of course those feels like temperatures already approaching that 90 degree mark. So it is going to be plenty muggy out there over the next couple of hours. Actual air temperatures climbing into the low 90s. That 10% chance here in San Antonio for an isolated stray shower before the day is done, before those temperatures fall into the 80s later this evening. Coming up in just a bit, we're going to have another weekend forecast preview, get you prepared for any events over the next couple of days. Another early look at next week and a check at the tropics because we do have some more activity to talk about, guys. Thank you, Mia. King Charles III back in public after staying behind closed doors yesterday to conduct state business. He and Queen Consort Camilla traveling to Wales as part of their tour of the United Kingdom. Meanwhile, as ABC's Faith Abube tells us, the line to see Queen Elizabeth lying in state got so long, officials temporarily kept new mourners from joining for several hours. The line to see Queen Elizabeth lying in state still growing as the national period of mourning for Britain's longest reigning monarch winds down. Overnight, the queue stretching up to five miles through central London, the longest since the doors to Westminster Hall opened to well-wishers Wednesday to pay their final respects. The wait at times estimated to be 14 hours from the start of the queue to the entry into the hall, where guards are holding vigil around the flag-draped coffin. Officials preventing new mourners from joining the line for several hours to control the wait. We've been about four hours now in the queue, but it doesn't feel like that. It's been amazing. How many hours in? Uh, we're now coming up to four and three quarters. Some joining the line anyway, despite officials announcing it was temporarily closed. Many in the line telling us they don't mind waiting. They're here to witness history. Oh, it's very overwhelming to, to see it all and to feel part of it and to know that you've been part of this day. It was just worth it. Okay. My feet are really hurting. My back is killing me. But Hello. you know what? I'd do it again. I would do it again. In Wales, the main cathedral in Cardiff, receiving the new king and queen consort for a prayer service. The trip to Wales, part of the new monarch's tour of the United Kingdom. The Welsh showing love to a king who served as the longest prince of Wales before his mother's death. And after that walkabout to see the crowd, King Charles met with political leaders at Cardiff Castle. He's now back here in London, where he and his siblings will hold a vigil for Queen Elizabeth tonight. In London, Faith Abube, ABC News. Caught on camera, an otter going ape over a gibbon at a Chicago area zoo. How a new habitat at the zoo is making this budding friendship even possible. And Bernie Champion in New Braunfels Canyon set to do battle tonight. Larry Ramirez has player reaction to the big game coming up in sports. A dog in Arizona drawing the attention and the concern of people who are passing by. How she's able to make her way onto the roof. And that's her. Keep an eye on the neighborhood. A pooch on patrol, a dog that loves to hang out on the roof of her house. Becoming the talk of the town in Glendale, Arizona. Nala's owners say that she's perfectly fine. She's just keeping an eye on the neighborhood. 
Her owners say she gets up on the roof using stairs that are behind the home and they don't let her stay up there too long, especially on hot days. But she does draw a lot of attention, as you can imagine. Her owners have had to post on social media that she's not stuck on the shingles, but that she hasn't stopped the gawkers. Even police have shown up to check on the dog. Her owners say that she also has a pool in the backyard so she can take a break from her patrolling to cool off. All right, let's review this one, one more time. An otter was caught on camera going ape over a gibbon at a Chicago area zoo. Don't see that every day. Is, <laughs> is this the beginning of a beautiful interspecies relationship? CNN's Jeannie Mose finds out. If you think Oscar and Felix are an odd couple, meet otter and ape. The otters were being introduced to their new habitat at the Brookfield Zoo in Chicago, a habitat that's home to small apes called gibbons. The gibbons live above in the treetops. The otters live below in the water. How does an otter break the ice with its neighbors? This 10-month-old pup went right up to Nubo, an 8-year-old male gibbon, began sniffing his underarm area, seemed especially intrigued by Nubo's feet. The curator of primates says this intermingling of species probably wouldn't happen in the wild where other species represent a threat. Otters are known as curious, intelligent, and gregarious animals. The gibbon seemed to me to look like embarrassed, okay, you know, whatever, but he looked a little embarrassed to me. He was just kind of watching cautiously, but was very comfortable with the otter kind of investigating his steed and smelling the hair on his chest. Otters are tactile creatures. Video of them holding hands at the Vancouver Aquarium became a hit on the internet. A couple of aquariums even put holes in their plexiglass so that otters and humans can do some interspecies hand-holding of their own. As for the otter and the ape, was that a smooch? Is there any chance of romance between gibbon and otter? Uh, I would think not. Actually, it was a series of pecks resembling kisses that finally caused the gibbon to swing away. Apparently, he's not that kind of swinger. Jeannie Mos, CNN, New York. He's just not that into otters, apparently. That's a children's book, though. The <laughs> Otter and the Ape. I'll tell you what, that was really cool how you can kind of pet the otters there through that I plexiglass. Know, I would do it. Yeah, that you was, could tell they liked it. Yeah, that was sweet. All right, y'all, well, it is going to be another toasty one out there this afternoon. It was warm to start off, 75 at the airport, which was 5 degrees above the average low for this time of year. We're at 84 right now, headed for the low 90s. Should be a little above the average high, but below the record of 99 set back in 1954. We will get you a preview once again again at those warm temperatures that continue into the weekend. Plus, we'll talk some tropics next. All right, well, it is that time of year. Let's get you an update on what we're still monitoring out there in the tropics. Out in the western Atlantic approaching the Lesser Antilles, still Tropical Storm Fiona. This is the latest information that came in as of the 10 a.m. update from the National Hurricane Center. Winds about 50 miles per hour, gusting upwards of 65. It is moving to the west at about 14 miles per hour. Generally, that motion is expected here throughout the upcoming weekend. But then notice as of the current forecast track, it is expected to curve farther up to the north as we head into the middle of next week, potentially strengthening into a category one hurricane. As of right now, this is no immediate concern for us here at home and along portions of the Texas Gulf coastline. But of course, it is something we will continue to monitor in terms of other activity out in the eastern Pacific. Tropical storm Lester continues to turn over the warm waters just to the south of the southern Mexico coastline that is expected to move farther up to the north in the west off to its northwest another potential area of development it's got a high chance for development into at least a tropical depression over the next five days that likely will continue moving to the northwest into the pacific there as well there's fiona that we were just talking about but in terms of the atlantic basin just a couple of other waves one that's expected to move farther eastward and then another wave moving farther northward both very low chances of development over the next five days but of course we'll keep eyes on it
Back here at home, we'll keep eyes on the radar today, but it's not going to be for everybody. Still plenty of scattered clouds moving in from the south, pushing farther up to the north again so far into the early afternoon hours. We found a few isolated showers near the Victoria area. I think the better chances of finding some additional splashes of rain, maybe an isolated rumble of thunder or two before the day is done, is going to sit across the southern and eastern reaches of the area. But for us here in San Antonio, it's not completely out of the question, so we'll keep a 10% chance there as well. Your temperatures this lunchtime hour, 84 here in San Antonio. It's already 90 in Pleasanton, 89 in Kennedy, and 85 out in Gonzales. 12-hour forecast throughout the remainder of the day today. Again, those temperatures climbing into the low 90s over the next couple of hours. It is going to be another hot one out there this afternoon. And then into the evening, we see those temperatures fall into the upper 80s shortly after dinner time. Those temperatures continue to fall later tonight. And again, we will keep eyes for that 10% chance here in San Antonio for an, a very isolated shower. Other than that, the humidity is here and it is going to stick with us into the weekend and into the beginning of next week as well. So maybe some additional areas of patchy fog, not completely out of the question tomorrow. And as we head into Sunday mornings as well, temperatures pretty humid, very similar to what we found out there earlier this morning. Still plenty hot into the afternoons, climbing into the low to mid 90s. Of course, with the humidity on hand, that will likely feel like the mid to maybe even a few upper 90s at times as well. High pressure once again moves over and tightens its grip on our weather pattern into next week. Unfortunately, that pretty much squashes rain chances, and it's still going to be plenty hot as we get ready to welcome the first official day of fall next Thursday. Ooh, will it be cooler, please? Let's <laughs> let's talk it and speak it into existence. Yeah. Let's get some cold fronts on <laughs> let's the way. Let's visualize it. Yes. You know, the NFL does what they can to protect quarterbacks, but in the end, when you're in the middle of a game, it's just just a bear how that protection <laughs> worked. Last that poor guy got beat. He up last night. got hit a lot last night, and at the end of the game, I don't know, around five minutes ago in the fourth quarter, he took a big hit that just drilled him into the ground, and he is your fantasy quarterback. <laughs> Or if you're just a fan of the Chargers, you're concerned about Justin Herbert. Plus, we have a unique first pitch, and I'm going to call it a wrister for a strike coming up. Week four, BGC kicks into high gear tonight. And a huge game on the schedule features two of the top teams in 12's top 12. Number eight, Bernie Champion, and number five, New Braunfels Canyon. Case at 12's Andrew Seeley has a preview of the action. Canyon enters Friday night's matchup with an undefeated 3-0 record against non-district opponents, and that includes a comeback victory over Crosstown rival New Braunfels 35-32 last week, a perfect way to lead into District 12 5A Division 1. I feel like we're having a great start. I feel like we're playing fast, playing hard. Uh, as our coaches tell us every day, we got something to prove. I feel like we're living up to it and we're going to keep going. We've scheduled some tough teams and played some good football team, but really proud of the way these guys are playing, uh, the way they've, they've fought and been able to, uh, to come from behind in two of these games and, and find a way to win. Bernie Champion comes in boasting a 2-1 record. The Chargers have been tested in close games against Laredo United South, Eagle Pass, and Canyon Lake. Now they're ready to open up district play against a team that's a little like looking in the mirror. They're similar to us on what they do uh, scheme-wise, so... Uh, well, I guess we'll just see who does it better. To face a team like that, it kind of sets a tone for us, you know. Super excited, ready to come out and play and show us, show our talents and what we're ready for. Meanwhile, our streaming schedule features a great battle over at Rutledge Stadium. Wagner and Smithson Valley kick off district play in 12-5A Division I. The Thunderbirds come into Friday's matchup after picking up their first win in overtime, while the Rangers are rolling after crushing East Central 45-7. And last but not least, Clark takes on Marshall in a 28-6A clash. Both the Cougars and Rams are looking for their first wins in district play after tough losses last week to Reagan and Brandeis, respectively. Clark and Marshall kick off right here at Ferris Stadium tonight at 7 p.m. One of 10 games you'll be able to watch live streaming on the BGC app. For the full streaming schedule, head right now to the BGC page at ksat.com. For KSAT 12 Sports, I'm Andrew Seeley. Thanks, Andrew. We are scheduled to stream 10 games tonight and four more tomorrow. And you can scan the QR code on your screen to see those games and the different ways to stream them.
Pro Football Government, powered by Davis Law Firm. All right, Chargers Chiefs last night kicked off week two in the National Football League. Late fourth quarter, LAC fans went their moment of don't be hurt, please don't be hurt when Chiefs defensive end Mike Dana drilled Chargers quarterback Justin Herbert while throwing the ball. Herbert missed the next play, but he did finish out the game. He will have tests on his ribs and chest today after taking several big hits last night. Chargers head coach Brandon Staley said his QB is okay. Chiefs rally from a 10-0 hole to win at 27-24. And check out this unique first pitch. Minnesota Wild defenseman Alex Goligoski delivered the first pitch ahead of the Royals Twins game with a hockey stick. I mean, that's a wrister for a strike. Look again, Minnesota Wild mascot Nordy made sure to call that one a strike, guys. That's impressive. There's some talent there. I think so. There's more talent down at Market Square, too. There she is. There she <laughs> is, our tropical storm friend. Yes. Hey there, guys. Well, get ready for some laughs as we head into the weekend. The original winner of Last Comic Standing. He'll be performing Friday and Saturday night there at Upstage Comedy Lounge. Joining us is the man, the actor, the legend, the comedian, Death Fan. Thank you, Fiona. It's very nice to have one legend introduce another legend. It's a double <laughs> legend today. <laughs> It's like double dragon, double legend, double deal. Burgers coming up. <laughs> yes. And speaking of burgers, National Cheeseburger Day is this weekend. We're going to tell you where you can get the ultimate burger for free. So, in honor of National Cheeseburger Day, our question of the day, where do you get your favorite cheeseburger? Let us know at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter, and you may see your answer a little later in the show. And then get ready for a few more laughs with a real San Antonian. We find out the story behind this local comedian's journey to the stage. All right, all that and more when SA Live continues in just a few minutes. Check this out. It's the Chicago Bulls jersey Michael Jordan wore in game one of the 1998 NBA Finals, the culmination of a famous season that was known as the Last Dance. Well, someone just ponied up $10.1 million during an auction so they can wear it. If that's higher than you expected, you're not the only one who's shocked at the final price tag. The pre-sale estimate was between three and five million dollars. This is the most money someone's ever paid for a piece of sports memorabilia that was worn in an actual game, but it is Michael Jordan. I wonder if it still has his sweat on it. it Did they it wash it? Great question. Well, they usually do, but I don't know if they wash that one. Ten million dollars. Mm -hmm. For a little um, Michael Jordan jersey and a little Michael Jordan sweat? Maybe so. There you go. Big All right. of sweating. <laughs> Let's get you one final look at temperatures out there this Friday afternoon. We are in the 80s and a couple of low 90s already out there. We will see those temperatures climb into the low 90s for most. Over the next couple of hours, that 10% chance for an isolated stray shower near San Antonio. More of the same into our Saturday. It's going to be plenty muggy, plenty warm, and that continues as we head into next week. Thank you so much, Mia, and thank you for watching the news at noon with us. I know there's a comedian on SA Live today, but that burger with the jalapenos That's and the cheese, the star? that was no joke. Okay. Mm -mm. That looked good. That's all you noticed. That's all I know. Yeah. SA Live starts right now. Today on SA Live, we are excited for National Cheeseburger Day this weekend, and we're going to tell you where you can get the ultimate burger for free. Plus, we feature a local dance company that's performing in the 16 de September Parade. And we feature a local comedian story and where you can see her perform live. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. We're Viva Tejana Dance Company and you're watching SA Live. Well, hello and happy Friday on this Jesse Says de Septiembre. Of course, that was Viva Tejana Dance Company, and you're going to see a performance for them from them in a little bit ahead of the parade. Well, our first guest today is the original winner of Last Comic Standing. He'll be performing Friday and Saturday night at Upstage Comedy Lounge. Joining us is the man, the actor, the legend, the comedian, <laughs> dad fan, and of course, Mary Bacay, hey. also comedian. All right, so. And legend. And, and also and legend, legend in legend. her own right. Yes, yes. Triple, triple legend. Extraordinaire, <laughs> everything. Okay, so this isn't your first time in San Antonio, right? Oh yeah, I, I performed at UTSA twice. And okay. this is my first time here not performing at a university, so that's nice. <laughs> that's nice, <laughs> yes. right? Okay. Um, have you 
you gotten to sample any of the restaurants around town? Yes. Okay. Yes. What were the restaurants that we ate at, Mary? We went to Wayne's Wings. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and we went to Los Hoyos, um, the coffee shop in uh, Los Patios. Okay. Great. Um, is there any food you're looking forward to trying here? I want to try some good San Antonio barbecue, and if anybody knows, I'm in a wild search for that. I heard the firehouse is really good. I don't know. I haven't been there. You know, it depends on who you ask and where you are on the best barbecue in San Antonio. But, it's, like, it's like asking Vietnamese people, right? Sure. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I'll tell you what the best pho is. Come on down for a bowl of soup. There's 21 different best ones. So same thing with the barbecue. But I tell you, if anybody watching right now wants to recommend a barbecue place, they can, what, Instagram, right? Yeah, just Instagram me. Just DM me. Slide I'll be into waiting. the DMs. Yes, Slide into my DM and show me where the best barbecue is. It's so good. So tell us a little about your comedy style. We've seen a little bit of it. Well, my comedy is very political, and by political, I mean very Vietnamese, <laughs> very barbecue, very, yes, and then I like to travel with a, a white Karen comedian, <laughs> just double white women comedy show. Uh, that sounds inappropriate, but it was very appropriate. <laughs> so getting into comedy, what made you decide to do it? Uh, you see, I failed math in high school. I dropped out of college, and this is the only option to get some health care, and I'm still <laughs> trying to do it. There's a doctor here. Hopefully, sh I can get an examination later on. <laughs> so, so you've been in several TV shows and movies. Yes. Uh, do you have kind of a, a favorite memory or experience or funny moment? Yes. I've been on Magnum. I've been on Maverick as well. I don't know what <laughs> show that is, show. according to Mary. Uh, no, it's, it's been a wild ride. It's the last comic standing. I've been doing a dozen TV shows and movies. and. It's very fun. I'm still trying to get health care. <laughs> is there, who's like the nicest celebrity you've ever met? The nicest celebrity I met are two people, Angelica Houston and also Casper Van Dien from Starship Troopers. Oh, Starship the Bugs! Yes! The Bugs! He's one of the yes. nicest, my hero, one of the nicest guys, Casper. <laughs> get Starship Troopers, that is a classic. Oh, I love white people. Right? I love white people. <laughs> so good. Okay, um, so what do you do in your spare time, if you have any? On spare time at the hotel, I do very exciting things, <laughs> very wild, almost inappropriate, Whole Foods. <laughs> I go to Whole Foods and get bags of groceries, I eat bananas. Uh, it's, it's so exciting I that am. the producer's looking away right now as he's filming me. <laughs> what? Is that what, what can someone always find in your fridge? Uh, you can find bananas and orange juice, that's how I party. <laughs> Lots of carrot juice, uh -huh. very exciting. I have kind of sharp eyes for an old Filipino man. <laughs> Well, just, <laughs> this is racist, but it's not. It's just making oh fun of myself. God. All right, so we've got a couple of uh, rapid fire questions here. Um, what superpower do you wish you had? Please don't say rapid fire to a Vietnamese refugee. <laughs> I appreciate that. But my, fa <laughs> my favorite superpower is to find barbecue as soon as possible. I need to. I'm at my second trimester right now, so I'm trying to head towards the third. Thank you. Thank you for zooming in on that. Trying to get to the third trimester <laughs> with the best barbecue in San Antonio. Hey, corn or flour tortillas? <sighs> Being Vietnamese, it has to be corn. You know, <laughs> we need the vegetables to survive. We're the boat people, and that's what got. That made no sense. We we went from Iowa to America. Favorite junk food? Favorite junk food? Snickers bar. It satisfies me. <laughs> Just a chocolate candy bar by myself at home with Whole Foods. Dogs or cats? Dogs. I have a dog named you Jasper. Dog. Uh -huh. I like my dogs like I like my women, white <laughs> and furry. <laughs> what famous person that you haven't met would you like to meet? Tom Hanks. Come on. <laughs> Tom Hanks. Yes. Forrest Gump. You know Forrest what I'm talking Gump. about. Cast away. Yes. All right. If you weren't a comedian, what would you be doing? If I wasn't a comedian, I would be laying on the couch eating Snickers bar all day, crying because there's nothing else. This is it. <laughs> this is it, San Antonio. This is it, Fiona. <laughs> and you got married during lockdown. Yes, there's nothing better than to be married to a white librarian and having a white dog at the beginning of the fall of society, the apocalypse. <laughs> and uh, that is the name of our wedding, Apocalypse in the Backyard. <laughs> and uh, we made it through two years. We can make it through anything. I was gonna anything. say, if you got through that, you'll, that's it, this is gonna last. Oh. It's gonna last forever. We can, <laughs> I think this is it. This is it. It's like I survived the Vietnam War as a baby, and then we survived an apocalypse of pathogens. Oh, <laughs> right. uh, yeah. After pathogens, coming down to the comedy club. We're going to yes. have a great time. All right, so Upstage Comedy Lounge, of course, this Friday and Saturday. Friday at uh, 8 p.m., Saturday, two shows, 7 and 9 p.m., right? Yep. Of course, tell folks 
how they can follow you, how they can find yeah. out what's next. Dat underscore fan on Instagram. I'll connect you to all of you. And we're very safe down there and funny. So come on down. And uh, speaking of uh, Asians and rice, let's talk about burgers. <laughs> We have upstage comedy club, Vietnamese comedians, Karens, and burgers. That's and right. look at this. All, they're all comedians. <laughs> this is Chuk Jay Ting Nguyen, and then this is Mary Pika Rizzi as well. We're all going to be performing together. N with or without burgers, with but we are. <laughs> yes. okay, well, we make sure we at least feed you. Here yes, the thank you. Oh, you're thank welcome. You. All right, we don't want anybody to go hungry. All right. A scene on SA Live is where we provided a link for more information, or just scan that QR code that you see on your screen. Mm. Okay. National Cheeseburger Day, as we've mentioned, is coming up on Sunday. So for our question of the day, we want to know, where do you get Wait, your favorite cheeseburger? Be sure to tag us at SA Live Case Out on Facebook and Twitter, and you might see your answer a little later in the show. He's already doing it. He's already digging in. <laughs> All right. Well, from That's comedy shows good. that, of course, will make you belly laugh to yummy burgers that will satisfy you. Joining us is John Evans, owner of UBP Burgers, who's here ahead of National, oh wait, National Cheeseburger Day. We're just gonna do si do there. <laughs> we're gonna do si, we're gonna do si do. All right, hello John. Hi, how you okay. doing? Okay, is there no better day than National Cheeseburger Day for It's you? our favorite day. <laughs> you don't say. We had a line last year for over seven hours. Seven <laughs> yeah. hours oh, last wow. year. Yep, yep. Wow, we're so we're worth the wait is what he's saying. We're looking okay. forward to it. So what are we making today? Well, I wanted to show you what the Ultimate Burger Press is all about, UBP Burgers, which is this old press design. What it does is it shapes the meat and puts a little indentation to help the meat cook more evenly so it stays juicy. Now it, it doesn't take very long and it also shapes it and weighs it out. So it just took a few seconds and I flip it over and I just lift up. And all it does is put an little indentation in the patty to help the meat cook more evenly because the heat cooks from the outside to the center. By the time you get to the center it's you know cooked all the way. So anyway, that's that's what it's that all about. Because yep. oh, like, nice. I've just been you know like kind of just pushing with my ears, with, like your thumb, like is it good? Is it done? I need to cook more evenly. But that's how to, of course, and that's why people say it's the juiciest burger they've ever wow. tasted. And, right? and no question about it, because normally your uh, juices they cook out and all this right here, it saves it into the well of the patty, and also designed it mm. where it's large enough so where you can put all your cheese and toppings and let them melt into the well of the patty as well. Like that right that's there. like yeah, a volcano of right. de deliciousness. And that's it. Really is. It's amazing. It's amazing. All right, so what's the next step? So, so we got it? Yeah, I got it right here to where you can go ahead and uh, take this off and you, you can go Ooh. ahead and add your favorite topping. I have uh, grilled oh, onions, I, I have put, sorry, okay. an egg. <laughs> going Vietnamese. Some <laughs> people love <laughs> eggs on their burger. Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> there you yes. go. And then, right. of course, I have a bun, so you can go ahead and make it out there. Right. We have the, a the mayonnaise, mustard, ketchup. That's going to help assemble. Sweet, so, yes. So there's our kind of sort of cheat sheet over there. Oh, exactly. This one has an egg, right? This, this one has an egg. Mm -hmm. Mine is going to be a disaster. Then you have a spatula right there. I'm already failing at this. Am I? On the burger. Yeah, it's ready to go. There you go. Here we go. There you go. And then you get your lettuce and tomato, mayonnaise, mustard, whatever your favorite is. I'm doing Vietnamese labor right now. Look at that. Working for free. <laughs> Do I get medical benefits for this? <laughs> health insurance. We're looking for health insurance. Okay, and you just got honored recently. Best Burgers, tell us how. Yeah, what we did was we got uh, Best Food Truck in New Braunfels, mm -hmm. so that was really quite an honor, and uh, so everybody's really excited about that. Our team works really hard, so uh, that was uh, it meant something to us to, to be recognized like that. And tell folks, like when they walk up, how, could, how do they order a burger? Because you can customize it, right? Right, exactly. That's the way we want to do it. We wanted to make a juicy burger and let you build it the way you want, right? You can add a mm. cheese or any favorite topping you want. We have grilled bacon, jalapenos, sauteed mushrooms, grilled onions uh, and even an egg so uh, it makes it a lot of fun to kind of build it the way you want but really what we're looking for is when you bite into it we want something that explodes with flavor and a oh, juicy yeah. burger and I gotta say John was torturing us because the whole time <laughs> as we we're coming to the segment he was cooking and it smells so good and we finally got a bite right now oh, yeah we'll so they're gonna yes. they're gonna dig into that because we're gonna find out what they what they think oh we already, we already yes. been eating yeah. 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 Okay. Starting so, uh, mm -hmm. true or false Juiciest burger. So juicy, yeah. <laughs> so you got yeah, three yeah. A's over there. I'll, okay? I'll take that. I'll and take that. tell us about this product because this is this is yours. Right, this right. Is your it product. is. It is. I found Pat on a little over three years ago, and what it does is it just does what my thumb did for years. It puts a little indentation <laughs> to help it cook more evenly. I just wanted to design it 
where it left more room. So at the end, I would have room to put all my goodies in there, mm -hmm. right? And normally, when I put my goodies on my other burger, I bite into it, they all fall off. This right here, they melt kind of in the well of the patty. Mm -hmm. So it makes it really fun to eat. But that, the goal is a juicy burger, and that's what oh, we're all about. It's a crater of yumminess. Mm -hmm. There you go. Oh, and other sizes, too? Oh, yeah. I cut, they come right? in all sizes. You got the quarter pound, third pound, and half pound. Uh, oh. You can get that on Amazon, or of course, our, our website, ultimateburgerpress.com. And of course, our seasoning that we use. People asked us over and over again, can you please put your seasoning out there so we have that available as well now? It's, it's a taste of America in a delicious pocket. Thank you, John. <laughs> Thank you, John. No. Very good analysis. <laughs> <laughs> Cheeseburger, of course, uh, cheeseburger Day this Sunday. This what Sunday. are you doing for it? We're, we're going to be a buy one, get one free all day. Uh, so that's from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. at night. And uh, we are going to have two trailers. We have two units there because we're expecting it to be super busy. So we're uh, going to be ready for you. All right. And it's been you. delicious. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. All right. For more thank information you. on UBP Burgers, just head to our website, SALive.com, and mm -hmm. click on the As Seen on SA Live tab or just scan that QR code on your screen. Yeah. All right, SA Live continues with a real San Antonian. We find out the story behind this local comedian's journey to the stage. And next, we get a preview performance from a Tejana dance company that is performing in tomorrow's Jesse Says de Septiembre Parade. <laughs> Bye.